Hi, uh, my name is Nikki Watts, and um, Maximilian Victor Self was my son, or Max, common, yeah, as we like to call him affectionately. And um, this is his artwork, and this is his exhibition, My World. And um, it really was his world and what was going on in his head. This one's Labyrinthium, and um, I'm actually going to put this on his uh, gravestone sort of cut off at about there, so that part. So you've got the Tree of Life and these beautiful sailing ships and um, then very much an Eshery style of uh, walling down here. And um, one of the songs in his funeral was Orinoco Flow with a sail away. So I just thought it would be a very apt one for him. And the beautiful waves coming at the side there as well. And then, one year ago in January, Max gave me um, a framed one of these that he'd done, and it's called Internal Evolution. And he described it that each, every little section in here is all part of a, a puzzle that needed to be put together. And um, it just ex explains so much about what it's like living in the head of bipolar and controlled chaos, mania, speed, and then what's beautiful about it, you don't notice it straight away, is up here it says, ancient wisdom coming from insomnia, combined with mental illness, forming into countless clusters of endless artistic adventures, slowly becoming an entire world of my own creation. And I just absolutely love this. And even a year and a half down the line, I still see new things in it each day. So I love that one. And then this one, the dream machine, was all about the chaos and uh, having nightmares and how if only there could be a machine where you could have you program in to have really lovely dreams and stuff like that. But you know how much um, there was of chaos in his head. And then this is Roots. And I remember when Max initially did this, how much I loved this little washing line in the corner with a pair of denim jeans and a shirt on the washing line and um, I think to a lot of people they really love this one because everything is entangled in the roots and um, there's just so much going on and yet there's beautiful vibrancy and, a, and an incredible sunset behind the uh, little shack. And then this one was done all with uh, uh, try fine like try fine liner pens and then coloured in in pencil so that's why it has a really really soft um, finish to it and it's called the witch's cauldron and um, this one is definitely a firm favourite I remember somebody commenting that they thought it would make an absolutely wonderful um, tapestry because it's so so soft even though there's like uh, witches and all sorts of underground bits going on in it. There's just a, a gentleness about it too. Um, and then Future 51, the vibrancy in this is incredible. And he did this by a technique using Photoshop when he came to the colouring part, obviously it's all hand drawn and putting different layers on, which is why you feel the whole picture coming out at you. And I, I just love the road coming through the middle here and the giant lamp. I, I just really think there's so much vibrancy to that one. And I'm sure he did too. And then Temple of Maya, he started that when he was kind of around about 17 or so, and just did more and more little finer bits. Every little step has stuff in it and there's a lot of uh, Mayan writing and um, just there's something going on everywhere, but he did like a lot of the main style of stuff. So that was his initial one on that level, which is why it was important to feature it in the exhibition. And then this one is Boundless. And it's just, it's the one that the BBC used to, um, uh, on, on BBC News to um, like highlight his artistic talents. And it's just, when it's uncolored, his uh, original black and white drawing is beautiful, but the colors that he's used just really bring it so much to life. And um, 
yeah, I don't know where he was at on this. I know he always wanted to travel the world, so maybe being boundless, you wouldn't be binded in by all the illness and mental health and you could just go off and go and do this. Who knows? That's my perception of what he might have been thinking. This one is um, called Angle Town, and you can see all the different kind of angles of things going on. I mean, how on earth he put this one together, I really, really do not know, because there's just so much going on in all the structure and everything. And you've got like the little crane over here. And then again, when he did the light for this and the colour, to have this beautiful big um, light, bit of light just coming flying out at you um, and the spirals mixed with the straight lines and everything, I, that's a really, really lovely one. And both the clocks, I always notice, have different times on them. Um, yeah, I really like that a lot. And I like the autumnal colours with that one. And then over here, this is chaotic. And yeah, his life had a lot of chaos in it. Um, the, it. You can see here, there's like lots of little words, angles, mind. Um, and then you've got these huge sort of microphone ears coming out to listening and the big crow here with his claws coming coming over um yeah that one i don't know whether he meant purposefully to leave it half colored or not but it looks absolutely beautiful just half colored because you get to see the detail in the black and white and then once again the vibrancy in the um piece above yeah very, very proud of Max and um, without Anne and Claire and Emma the Framer and Michelle Kalinsky, this wouldn't have all come together. So as a team, I think Max uh, put his little magic um, spell around everybody and um, we did it. Between us all, we did it. And it's just been absolutely phenomenal. And um, the love for Max out there and his artwork is fantastic and all he wanted in life was that his art would be his legacy and now it well and truly is.